Thank you guys for being here, number one. Um, kind of on a uh, unrelated but somewhat related topic, uh, we've got kind of a, a, a monster in the college baseball community who's going through a tough time. Uh, the head baseball coach at Coastal Carolina University is having some health stuff going on, just like kind of like to let everybody know that's listening that um, – you know, Coastal Carolina University, you know, we're praying for you and lifting you up over here and just, um, um, you know, with Coach Gilmore and, um, you know, just hoping for the best and everything that comes goes goes down that that path. So um, in terms of Appalachian State University baseball, um, just uh, really excited. Um, you know, I think some of the things that we look at kind of behind behind closed doors and the numbers behind the numbers is 66% uh, of our at-bats last year were by a freshman or a sophomore. 56% uh, of our, bat, our innings pitched last year were by a freshman or a sophomore. So in terms of, you know, building depth and building stability, we like the direction we're heading. I've coached 89 Sunbelt games since I've been here. Uh, the first 45 Sunbelt games that I was here, we won nine games. Uh, the last 44 uh, Sunbelt games that we've uh, competed in, we've won 21. Um, so just the trajectory of the program, we really like where we are. Obviously, there's things that we need to continue to improve on, but got a good base. You start looking at the lineup, you see a lot of familiar names, and I think that's a really positive thing. Um, you know, one thing that I've always kind of, um, you know, prided myself and our staffs on is just the ability to develop players and people. Um, and I think that what you'll see is you've seen a consistency in guys in our program getting better. And I think that that's what you'll continue to see, just with especially the two guys that are going to be talking right after me here. Um, those are two great examples of guys that, you know, um, and I think it's really holistic in terms of our, we just got a lot of guys that really want to be good, uh, work extremely hard, do a good job in the classroom. I think last year in community service nationwide among all male um, uh, Division One teams, not baseball teams, but all athletic teams, we were third in the country in uh, total community service. Three of the last five semesters, we have a, a 3.0 or better in the classroom. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of pr pretty cool to hear softball talk about, you know, the struggles and, you know, the adversity that they have to face in the classroom because it's the same thing here. You know, just whether you're on the road or not on the road, you're in season, and that's that's the struggle in and of itself. And just uh, got a lot of guys that want to be good in all areas. And it's it's it's, it's a fun, fun environment to walk out to practice to every day. I think we've got a great group of guys um, that, again, work extremely hard to be very successful and really everything that they do. Kermit, could you give us a, maybe a little bit of a preview um, of your schedule, certainly the non-conference, and you know, similar question to, to the one I asked Shelley. You know, what, were the, what were the things you were trying to accomplish? What were the goals? How, what was the purpose of some of the things you scheduled early on? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think scheduling year after year just kind of falls into place. I think sometimes you have, you know, home and away agreements and different things like that. So Gardner-Webb opening up, we've got a, a, you know, home and away schedule with them. Um, you know, it's just kind of a standing agreement um, where they'll come up here um, like they did last year, and we'll go down there the next year and continue on from there. Um, and this year just kind of happened where we have three other away series. Um, just kind of happened that way. Um, but Gardner-Webb, obviously a great opponent. When they left here last year, and they were kind of decimated by injuries after they left, but um, you know, I thought that uh, thought they were one of the better teams in our league for sure. It's going to be a great test. The guy that we're facing game one uh, gave us a really hard time last year. Faced him in Charlotte two years ago. Gave us a really hard time there. He'll be one of the better better pitchers that we face all season. Um, so really excited about that opportunity. Obviously, the next weekend we head down to Kentucky. Um, and then um, the next weekend we go to UNCG, a really reputable program within our state. Um, and then the next weekend we go down to Charleston Southern. So, I, yeah, I think the rationale on any scheduling is, you know, what is it going to do in terms of RPI? You know, so we're, we have a good number of road games, as you can see on the schedule, and that's always favorable in the RPI. Um, but if you do what you're supposed to do within the schedule that you're given, then you have an opportunity to play in the postseason. And that's, our, that's, that's the method for every schedule I'll ever put together is to make sure that we're in a position to, um, you know, if we take care of business that we're playing in the postseason. Going back to last season, and you and I talked about this after last year, you know, the, the front half of the year, maybe even a little past the front half of the year, really strong play. Mm -hmm. um, won some big series, had some, some really mm -hmm. kind of breakthrough wins, and then stumbled a little bit coming down the stretch. Mm -hmm. As you think back to that, and then you think back to what you guys have put into the off season, how have you guys utilized the lessons learned there to train in the off season, and then how will you apply them going forward given that you're getting ready to start, you know, a long road uh, series. Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, I think players are, you know, probably a little smarter than we give them credit for sometimes. You know, and I, I don't – sometimes I just think you leave it alone and you let it kind of take care of itself. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, 
kind of back to the two guys that will talk after this. I know they're motivated every day to be way more than we ever were at any point last year, not just the beginning of the season or the end of the season or what have you. Um, you know, I don't think there were really any factors other than we just we played, you know, uh, really good teams down the stretch that played a little bit better than we did in that nine inning segment. Um, but, you know, I don't think there was anything much behind it on that end. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just I, I like the group that we have in terms of the senior leadership that we have and, heck, the junior leadership and the sophomore leadership. Uh, we got a, a bunch of boys that want to be really good. Um, so, um, yeah, I think I think there's lessons to be learned in a win and a loss and a lot of different aspects to a lot of different seasons. But I think that, you know, probably deeper than that, which we, we I'd like to think we talk about quite a bit, is just, you know, I think the lessons in each person's life. You know, I think, uh, you know, these two guys, they'll talk after me. Uh, they've got long stories in just their life and, and, the, and the journey that they've been on. And that's going to be very motivational in how they want to, you know, uh, cap off their career and their legacy that they want to leave behind, not just with Appalachian State baseball, but with, you know, with their careers and with their families and everything else. And, um, but yeah, there's, there's a, there's, there's 35 guys um, set up on Bodenheimer Drive that want to be really, really good, represent this university in a really, really good way. And I think they're motivated by a lot of things. Um, maybe it was how we played down the stretch. Maybe it was how we started the year. Maybe it was how they played individually. Um, but um, yeah, we got a motivated group right now. I couldn't come here and not talk about a little bit of recruiting along yeah. the way. You know, looking at your freshman group, yeah, all North Carolinians. Yeah, um, so that's kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting dynamic for yeah. you. Obviously, there's talent in the state, and you sure. guys are out looking for it and looking hard. Can you talk a little bit about the ability to go out and really rely on? recruiting right in your backyard yeah I mean it's huge you know it, it saves on the gas miles for sure um, but uh, yeah it's a great state I think anybody will tell you um, great coaches in the state great baseball programs in the state and our, our reputation as a university within the state you know it's kind of funny like usually every kid that I've talked to within state has had a teacher somewhere along the line that graduated from here who's got a, a banner or a poster or something sitting in their room and all they talk about is App State um, so you know from from our our standpoint is kind of a recruiting advantage to stay in that and, and that it doesn't matter what part of the state you're in I mean they, they're gonna have somebody um, that was touched greatly by this university and that's been a, it's been a huge recruiting advantage for us but just more than anything is it's just really good baseball we've got really good baseball in our state um, you know and then when we go out of state I think it's a good compliment to the guys that we're able to build that base with but you know when you look at our freshman class you'll probably always see a high percentage of those guys being from North Carolina um, you know a lot of different reasons for that more than anything is I think it's just um, it's just who we are you know it's uh, it's it's who we want to be we want to have people in the stands we want to have you know people that are associated with our university for a long long time um, not just come here to play baseball but be a part of this family and um, I think that you'll get that sense of that and it's kind of funny these two guys after me are both from out of state so um, I think that that um, I, but I think when you're building it that way um, that stability is going to stay there for a long time and when you you know we don't just talk about becoming successful we talk about sustaining that success after we accomplish it um, and I think with that I think the uh, that that base has got to be built a specific way Kermit, just looking at the conference in general it seemed like when the preseason poll came out first place votes were pretty spread out over mm -hmm. a few teams and it seemed like they were just kind of pretty tight clusters inside of the divisions um, are you do you think you're starting to see a little more parity in the conference do you think that's kind of maybe how it's going to forecast or, you know, how do you feel like, you know, is that reflective at all of what, of what the conference might look like this year? Yeah. Uh, number one is I, I haven't even looked at the preseason poll, so I don't, um, I didn't know that those votes came out that way, but um, in terms of parity, uh, you know, um, again, down the stretch last year, um, as we alluded to earlier, you know, we finished the year, um, I think at South Al, um, Arkansas State, who was ex as hot as anybody to start the year last year and uh, Coastal Carolina right before the conference tournament, you know, and I think that, you know, I think there's times of the year that you catch people and I think there's, there's uh, it's just a really good league, you know, all in all, it, you know, I think that records and, you know, statistics and everything aside is just um, this league has been ranked anywhere from 6th to 10th RPI league in the country out of 30 conferences across Division One um, since I've been in the league and I mean that's that's fantastic, you know, and I think that, you know, the moves that we're making in terms of, you know, how we schedule and how we do different things to become, you know, more of a multi-bid league year in, year out. Um, yeah, 
uh, parity, if that's a word you want to use, I, I guess I'd just go the other way and just say it's a really good league top to bottom, and it really doesn't matter. You're going to walk out on Friday night and face a dude, and he's going to be a good pitcher, and you, you're going to trickle down from there. And I think that, you know, to be prepared for that, and I think that's, you know, kind of taking it a different direction. I think that's I think that's our, our biggest preparation. We talk about development and all that. Um, but, you know, as I want these two guys to trickle down to the newer guys, is just, you know, that's – every week and quite honestly it's every game um, especially if you're scheduling in a way that you want to play in a postseason you want to have a good RPI um, you go to Kentucky you know at a conference and you you know you got Wake Forest and you got North Carolina and you got this the, I mean if if you want to compete I mean you, there's not going to be again parity whatever word you want to put there um, you know we need to be uh, day in day out ready to compete with everybody you mentioned pitching you, you got Jason and Tyler coming back they both got a lot of work last year and they're still kind of on the younger side mm -hmm. as far as you know where they are um you just what are you expecting from them and just kind of what are your overall expectations for the pitching rotation this year as it develops yeah um you know number one is i think it's the best starting point that we've had uh since since i've been here i hope that i say that at this time every year um but uh it's uh it, it's the best starting point that we've had again through two different ways, through recruiting and through development. I think guys get better, and I think that, you know, we're continuing to recruit a high-caliber player. Um, but, you, you know, I think Tyler's got a chance to, you know, be kind of, uh, you know, the guy that throws the first pitch of the weekend and, you know, be a really, really uh, good part of our program in terms of, you know, how you start the week. You know, it's, it's almost kind of unwritten that Friday night that first pitch is going to start your week and kind of work backwards from there. Um, but has we've done since we've been here is we've always had a strong bullpen and that's just philosophically that's what we believe and I think that we've got a chance to have a really good one again um, I really do and it's kind of kind of fallen into it in the last few years with some different guys um, and you know Caleb Bowman Andrew Papp um, Jack Hartman you know those guys Reed Howell um, and we, we this year's no different we've got a chance to kind of have that we've always looked for three guys that we feel like can kind of compete in any situation um, and I don't know that we've ever really named a closer um, per se I think we've always just had guys that we felt comfortable with seventh inning we go to this guy eighth inning we go to this ninth inning it might be a save opportunity we go, but we've always had three guys that kind of going into each game we feel pretty confident with and I think you know I think we got a few guys that have a chance to do that Jack who will talk after me here um, Noah Hall he's a freshman another North Carolina kid that I think the, this guy's kind of the limit for him um, and then Andrew Papp kind of the old grizzled veteran um, to, to pop down there um, not quite as good a hair as we had last year in the bullpen but um, no punch, sorry. Um, I, had to, I had to at some point there. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think those guys have a chance to be good. Two, two transfers uh, that have come in, uh, Quentin Martinez, Shane Roberts, um, and then a guy who redshirted for us last year, Cole Hooper, have a chance to kind of round out the weekend rotation and going into the midweek. But I think those are all names that you, you're going to hear a lot this year. Um, really excited about our pitching staff, you know, and then there's a couple other guys there that, you know, you go into an inner squad and then all of a sudden you leave there, you know, a little, little more confident and uh, good days, bad days, younger guys that, that maybe haven't pitched a whole lot. And um, you, you're starting to see those guys come along pretty well, too. But, um, you know, those names that I just mentioned, you're, you're going to hear a lot this year. And, yeah, really excited about them. Very optimistic. Kind of talking about what Coach was going on about, you know, not, not really being a closer, per se, in a bullpen, but just trying to have guys that can go out there and, and do it when needed. Um, How does it feel to kind of get in that mix a little bit more and, and, and trying to Maybe be one of those guys that steps in and becomes one of those really reliable options like a Caleb Bowman or some of those other guys before. Yeah, uh, Caleb was great last year. It's kind of hard to compete with that. I mean, he was always the guy we went to, and he was my roommate, actually, so it was always fun going in after the games with him, talking about how he felt, and I think that helped me kind of work into this year, you know, just going out there carefree and, you know, late situations, it's hard you know, um, with the pressure, but... Uh, Really, it's going to happen. It's baseball. If there's a bleeder, you know, you can't really deal with it um, any other way than any other game. You know, it's just got to be another game, really. Um, the whole idea of competing at, against the best, I mean, that's always going to get to you. But really, I just got to treat it like an inner squad, really. That's kind of the way I've looked at it this year. It's just I don't really care who's in the box. I'm just going to throw my best stuff. Um, Coach Spoh's done a really good job at really emphasizing that. You know, you have great stuff, not me. But in general, our team has great stuff. Um, so basically, we just go with the plan, and whoever's in the box doesn't matter. So they're going to swing and miss, or they're going to hit it. It's up to them. Is there anything you know in those conversations with Caleb that I guess I don't know if you know opened your eyes a little bit more, but just kind of um, something that stood out as like a common theme for him that 
maybe you want to incorporate? Yeah, uh, I guess to get more specific, I mean, Caleb's a really religious guy, so I kind of put all my faith into God, and just uh, he would always talk about, you know, whatever happens, he's always got our back, you know. Um, and then from more of a competitive standpoint, really just, like I said, just going out there competing against whoever, it doesn't matter who's in the box. Caleb really didn't care who's in the box. He was just going to go with the plan. And uh, at the end, he usually got pretty excited. So uh, it was just a testament to how hard he worked going up to those games. And um, really just his attitude showed in a good way, just the fact that he didn't care who was in the box. And he would just let it go every time. So. Question to both of you. Coach talked a, a lot about the youth that was in the lineup <laughs> last year. And, and you guys are obviously um, kind of the, the veterans with this group. What kinds of things do you try to do individually to bring your leadership style, realizing that every guy is different and different people respond to leadership in different ways? You know, what are the things you found to be effective in helping those younger guys along? And then kind of as a follow up to that, um, because you've got so many guys coming back, what's the value of that continuity on the field and the chemistry and trust in the guy next to you? Because, you know, that's most of what sports success is really about. Yeah, I mean, that's that's huge um, when you get guys that return um, because uh, they know what uh, collegiate pitching is like. Um, they know what collegiate hitting is like, um, and they know what it takes to be good at this level. Um, but going back to your first question, uh, I think it's just getting to know everybody, uh, whether that's freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or even seniors that you don't really get to see that often. Uh, the first thing you got to do is get to know them um, on an individual basis, not just on the field, and kind of know how, once you get to know them, kind of figure out how that you can communicate to them. Um, because you're right, certain people respond uh, different ways. Jack, same, same kind of question. You know, the, the, the pitching staff is almost it, it kind of its own unit mm -hmm. uh, aside uh, because of the way it's handled. How does that <laughs> dynamic work within that group? Yeah, so we we kind of have this idea that the pitchers versus the hitters when it comes to practice, you know, who's who's working harder. Um, we go through pretty intensive uh, conditioning, so kind of we make our bonds during conditioning. Really, we all suffer through that together. Um, and then when it comes to inner squads, we're also in different dugouts. Pitchers are in their own dugouts, hitters are in their own dugouts. So there's a really tight bond between the pitching staff, but. Um, we also try to work our way into the hitters sometimes. You know, we'll stick around, shag extra, or just kind of, I like to feed the tea sometimes with the hitters. I used to be a hitter, so it kind of relates to that. Um, but yeah, I just, Coach Spell makes a good emphasis that we're a team. We always finish our, uh, our day with a, a breakdown, um, pitching wise. And then I know as a group, we do that at the very end of the pr our practice. But uh, yeah, it's just, just day in and day out. We're brothers, so we just try to stick together, get each other's backs, so. Any scouting report on the new turf? How much are we liking the uh, the new field over there? Because it looks pretty it's awesome. sharp. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. It's awesome. The field looks awesome. Um, bullpens look great. Want to get a lot to see that. But uh, the indoor is awesome also. also. I know a lot of people haven't seen that yet. But uh, Coach Smith has done a great job with the indoor. He's done a lot on his own um, with the help of his other coaches. But it just looks great. We're really excited about this year and what's more to come. So. Um, you mentioned some of the pressures that you face that can sometimes make things hard. What do you personally do or as a team do to sort of get through those pressures or get through any hardships that you face? Have fun. <laughs> I mean, I think last year uh, being a transfer, I, I transferred in not knowing what Division One was like. I've never seen a pitch, never been to Lafayette and heard the crowd of 5,000 people. Um, and so I found myself uh, really stressed um, wanting to make the play, um, sometimes overdoing it, sometimes overdoing it, hitting, swinging at pitches I shouldn't be. Um, but just have fun and relax. Me and Jack are two seniors. We've, we've got nothing to lose. Um, it's our job to come out and win, make sure everybody's prepared, and just have fun. Yeah, I'll touch on that. Preparation, I mean, that makes it easier. It's uh... – you know, people talk about the greatest competitors, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, um, Peyton Manning. They talk about making the practice harder than the game, and we do a great job of that. You know, I mean, it's hard to compare, like, when we go to Lafayette or play UNC, wherever it might be, that real competition. But uh, we get as close as we can get. We make it as hard as we can in practice so the game is a little bit easier. So, yeah.